ahead and get started this evening looking forward to what God has in store for each and every one of us tonight and uh, so excited about what God is doing Dr driving over here this afternoon this evening I couldn't believe it six o'clock and it was already dark uh, but uh, I'm telling you uh, it and God good to get us here safely praise the Lord so excited about that let's all stand if you will those of you already are praise God you're already prepared and ready to go we're going to sing one of them good old peppy songs because it's dark. My wife already said, it's dark and I'm tired. We actually have a little joke that we say, if it's dark on all sides of the house, we can go to bed. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, well, we can't do that anymore. Praise the Lord. Uh, so excited. Let's go ahead and sing this good song. Page number 120, Victory in Jesus. If you got your uh, books, then you go ahead and grab that book. Uh, most of you probably already know that. But Brother Don, come on around. And let's sing this good song, Victory in Jesus. All right. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning of his
pray until something happens. And uh, I'm thankful for Brother Brian and how he is uh, heading all that up. And you make sure that you come out. We're going to do that on the second Monday of every month. So if you can do that, uh, come on out and help us pray. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for the leaders of this country. Uh, we need to pray for the leaders of our church and the leaders of, uh, that are helping us continue on for the glory of God. And uh, boy, I think we need to pray for our kids too. We need to pray and lift them up and uh, pray that God will put a hedge of protection about them to be able to use them. But uh, you pray, Brother John, and we'll sing another good song. But we love you, Brother John. Appreciate you, Brother. God bless you. Can you remember the day you cried out to Jesus and he came? And at that day, it was like an anvil lifting off your shoulders. Yeah. And boy, wouldn't you like to feel that again? Amen. Well, you can. If you come one time, he'll come again. Yeah. He said, he never leave us, never forsake us. Yeah. Boy, what a blessing. What a Jesus we have. Loves us, cares for us, yes, takes care of us, moves things out of our way when we move. And I've been in prison all day long. Amen. And I'm glad to see some uh, pretty faces. Amen. All right, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this day, Lord, for your goodness and mercy and your grace. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, for uh, that we have an invitation to come to the throne of grace. Lord, at uh, any, any time, come boldly to the throne, throne of grace, knowing that there's a holy and righteous God sitting there waiting. Lord, and his son sitting at his right hand and Lord, they're waiting to hear from the Holy Spirit of God that lives and rules and reigns us, Lord, to take our prayers to the throne of grace. Lord, we thank you for that. And Lord, we want to pray for our church. Lord, there's people in our church that's hurting tonight. And Lord, they need a they need a, a, a extra blessing, dear God. Lord, there's people carrying burdens in here that, that really none of us know anything about. But Lord, you know all about them. Lord, I pray that you touch those burdens. I pray, Lord, that they'd come to you. Uh, to have those lifted off of them, dear God. And I pray that you touch them in the coming days. Lord, I want to pray for our pastor. Lord, I pray that you give him traveling mercies, dear God. Fill him with the Holy Spirit of God. Use him in a great and a mighty way, dear God. Lord, I pray for Sunday morning services, dear God. I pray for our choir, Brother Tom. I pray that you touch them, Lord. Touch these voices that might lift them up, uh, Lord, to lift you up, dear God. And I pray for our church staff, dear God, all of these men, Brother Shane, uh, and Brother Joseph, dear God, and ask you to bless them. Brother Harper, Lord, we thank you, dear God, for what he does here in our, our college, Lord, and uh, help us, dear God, to keep that going. And, uh, Lord, we just pray there's so many things going on here. Our foreign missions, dear God, we ask you to bless those missionaries, Lord, that Thanksgiving's coming up, Lord. They're not going to be able to be home around their immediate family, Lord, but they have a family wherever they are. ask you to bless them, dear God. Lord, I thank you that the sun never sets on the ministry here at this church. There's always somebody doing something to advance the word of God. And, Lord, we pray for, pray for the ones that plays the instruments here, dear God, what a blessing they are. Lord, this is uh, some, say some people here, dear Lord, that's, more, that's closer to us than our family members. We thank you for each and every one of them. Lord, I pray for our teenagers. I pray that you'd touch them, dear God. The ones that's in the high school, Lord, uh, I pray that you'd touch them, help them to keep their testimony. Our college students, Lord, we pray that you'd bless them. Maybe some of them's traveling home uh, next week, Lord, and I pray that you'd touch their automobiles, hedge them up, and protect them. Lord, we pray for our kids. Lord, back there to, uh, tonight, that's, uh, those people that's dealing with our kids, Lord, we ask you to touch them. Lord, I pray that all, every one of those children back there would come to know you one day as their personal Savior. Lord, there's nothing, nothing like knowing that you're going to heaven one day. And I pray that those teachers back there would say something, Lord, that would enlighten their heart, that they might realize that they need God in, in their life. And Lord, I, I need revival in, in my home. I'm not exempt from anything. Lord, I need revival in my home. Lord, we need revival in all our homes. Lord, we need revival in our church. Lord, we need revival in our nation. Lord, I pray for those that's in charge over us, dear God. Lord, I pray that they might all come to know you one day as 
as uh, their personal Savior, dear God. And I pray for our first responders, our police, dear Lord, Lord, and our doctors, Lord, that know, that know more than we do. But, Lord, you gave them the ability to do what they do. And, Lord, I pray that you would bless them. And, Lord, help us to keep our knees bowed, Lord, and our hearts clean and clear. Lord, that we can get in touch with you at all times. Lord, sometimes we need to get in touch with you in just a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Lord, sometimes we need to get in touch with you, Lord, when we can't get in touch with anybody else. Lord, I pray and thank you, dear God, for the opportunity to be able to do that, dear God. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the day that you saved us, each and every one of us, Lord. Lord, we're going to give you the honor and glory in this day. Pray for Brother Shane as he comes to, uh, to preach to us tonight. Pray, Lord, you give him the exact words that we need to be encouraged. Lord, help us not to be the same when we leave here tonight. Help us to be different. And Lord, the main objective here is to be more like you. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to love people. Lord, help us to look at other people and see their needs. Get our eyes off our needs and get our eyes on other people's needs. Lord, we give you the honor and glory in all that you do. In Christ's name, amen and amen. amen. You go ahead and be seated. Thank you so much, Brother John. Thank you so much for being here this evening. We're going to sing another good song, page number 359. But before you come, uh, start singing that song. You go ahead and start turning that way. I'm going to make sure you know, to, uh, next week is what? Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. I saw turkeys uh, in the church earlier today, and it wasn't. It wasn't people I was talking about, by the way. I don't, and uh, but I saw it, and uh, I tell you, I'm looking forward to that day. I told somebody earlier today I'm already fasting, so I can eat everything I want on Thanksgiving Day. So, uh, but uh, no, I, I'm not really doing that either. So, uh, but I'm I'm thankful for Thanksgiving. But we do move our midweek service up. So, if you'd like to come and make be a part of that service next week, we move it to Tuesday. It's going to be Tuesday evening and as well as our morning service that we have on Wednesday is going to be moved to Tuesday morning as well. So you come out next week at our midweek service, and uh, we're looking forward to having a good time for that. But uh, And also, Brother Bruce had given me a call earlier and wanted to mention this prayer request that his uh, his mother's uh, sister, his her husband, uh, passed away a little bit ago, and uh, we just want to be praying for that family uh, that, that uh, we can just uh, pray the comfort and peace of God upon them as well. And I'm so thankful that we can go to the Lord and go to the prayer, and uh, we can lean on Him even when there's somebody else. Uh, Brother John had mentioned in his prayer that there's times that he can't uh, get in touch with somebody else, but there's never been a time that I've tried to get in touch with God, and I wasn't able to get in touch with Him because He was there every time we could lean on Him. We get Brother Don to come around and sing this song or be able to lead us this song. Page number 359 in your hymnals. Go ahead, pull those out. Let's sing that good song. Amen. One thing about getting older and more mature is you have a lot of memories. And I remember this song years and years ago, uh, way back in the 1900s it was. I think one of my grandchildren asked me one day when my birthday was, and I told her it was whatever it was and she said Papa you were born in the 1900's yes I was but way back in the 1900's the little old church we uh, were members of we had a radio broadcast on Sunday afternoon at WTJH anybody remember though that radio station absolutely and uh, many memories that we have uh, back in those days but this song was the song that we opened up our broadcast every Sunday afternoon leaning on the everlasting arms what a fellowship what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms what a blessedness what a peace is mine leaning on the everlasting Secure from all alarm, leaning, leaning, I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on. Everlasting 
secure from all alarm, bleeding, bleeding, I'm bleeding on the everlasting arm. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Bleeding on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so dear. Bleeding on Everlasting arms leaning, leaning. I'm safe, secure from all the Lord. Leaning, leaning. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad that we can lean on Him. I have a special this evening. We ask that Sister Loretta come around and sing for us as he, she takes us into this uh, preaching time. And uh, so thankful for that, that the talent that God has given to everybody at our church. And uh, you look around, and it's not like this everywhere. I'll be honest with you. Uh, I've gone to churches, and if you pastors and preachers that have traveled around, uh, you see that it's not like the way that it is around here. And we're so thankful that God has truly blessed us. But you pray for Sister Loretta as she sings for us and we'll just worship God and uh, get ready to have our Bibles ready and be it's a preaching. But you pray for Sister Loretta. desire to live for him and it's my desire to help someone today someone who may have failed find their way as I too was once so lost but I found my way to God and now it's my desire to live for him If you could see where Jesus brought me from just to get me here today, then you would know the reason why I love him so. So you can take this old world, all its wealth, all its riches, I don't need their power, it's my desire to live for him. Oh, if you could see where Jesus brought me from just to get me here today. Then you know the reason. 
reason why I love him so. So he can take this old world, all its wealth, all its riches. I don't need their power. It's my desire. It's my desire. It's my desire. Absolutely wonderful. Go ahead, turn your Bible, 2 Timothy chapter number 2. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 this evening. And uh, so thankful for that good song. It ought to be our every desire that we could please the Lord and live for Him and uplift Him. Uh, we are supposed to uh, edify one another and uplift the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, that is our uh, job to do. God has given us a job to do is to tell others about Jesus Christ, tell others how great He is, how wonderful He is, and we ought to do that. I'll be honest with you, if you start praising God, it just makes you start wanting to praise God more. And uh, so thankful for that good singing this evening. 2 Timothy chapter number 2 this evening. Uh, everyone knows uh, about foundations, I'm sure. Uh, I, I know that uh, everyone knows that you need to have a good, strong foundation if you're going to have a good, strong house. So we're thankful that God has given us a foundation. You say, well, where is that foundation? Well, 2 Timothy chapter number 2. Look at with me in verse number 15, and I want to read just a few verses to get started. But look at verse number 15. It says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, mm. rightly dividing the word of truth. But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase the more ungodliness, for their word will eat as doth a canker. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. We begin to look at that, and Brother Paul is uh, uh, talking to Timothy, and he's telling him to beware of these people. Uh, you need to do something. You need to study, study, study. I believe in needing to study the Word of God. I'm so glad that here at Harvest Baptist Tabernacle, we even have a Bible school that if you want to be a part and want to be able to see uh, something to, uh, further and deeper in the study of the Word of God, then we have something that is available to you. And uh, by the way, for this shameless plug, Brother Steve, I won't charge you but $2. Praise the Lord. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But we are thankful that we do have that. And then also we have the Sunday school classes. And praise God, how many of you enjoy in Sunday school? Amen. So glad that we have Sunday school classes that we're able to go through and we're studying. But then there are some, and Paul's warning about a couple of men here, that had some errors, some problems that they were preaching. Uh, they were pausing from problems and they, they were overthrowing some of the faith of some of those people. But then he goes into verse number 19. And he says, and I love this word, nevertheless. <laughs> no matter what they're doing, no matter what error that these people are trying to propagate, no matter what's going on, when you're studying the Word of God and you're continuing in the faith of Jesus Christ, nevertheless, look what it says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. No matter what the wind is blowing, no matter what the nation is doing, no matter what the uh, political world is doing, no matter what the social world is doing, no matter what is even in the religious world, no matter what we do here, the foundation of our faith is sure. It is in Jesus Christ. And we have that foundation that is sure. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his 
I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I know my children. And to be honest with you, Brother Jose, I don't, I don't have to look at my phone to be able to see. Whenever I answer the phone, it could be in my pocket, but I know the voice of one of my children. I know the voice of my wife. I know the voice when Daniel calls, there's going to be money involved. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry, son, I threw you under the bus. <laughs> If I, I get a call from Ethan, I hear his voice, I know what's going to be involved. Probably problems with a girl or something like that. But uh, I'm joking, I'm joking. So, uh, But I know Amber, whenever her voice, I, and she calls me, I guarantee you money and something else is going to be involved. Amen? But then we have, uh, the, we know those voices, and I'm glad that God knows, and he doesn't have to have caller ID. He doesn't have to know and be able to have somebody to tell him who's calling him. When I call my God, when I call my Savior, He knows exactly who is calling and who is, like that old song, is ringing up that old royal telephone. And I'm thankful that when I call, I, I don't ever get a busy signal and I don't ever have a problem getting through and no one ever tells me to hold on a little bit. I'm thankful that God knows who I am. And it says, And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity oh my thank God that we have the Bible telling us the direction in which we should go but we're looking at this foundation but that's uh, that foundation nevertheless the foundation of God thank God that it's not the foundation of the church not the foundation of the preacher not the foundation of the classes not the foundation of a family but it's the foundation of God the foundation that is sure. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I beg you right now, God, that you would help me. Lord, I pray that you would just touch me. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit of God. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the remainder of this service. God, I pray that you'd help those that uh, are watching us by way of the Internet. God, encourage them, strengthen them, help them, Lord. And God, we thank you for those that have uh, gathered here in this sanctuary to be able to worship you tonight. And God, we thank you for what we've already felt. But God, we look forward to what you, we hear from you during this time. Lord, touch us, be with us. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. And amen. As I said, the foundation of God is sure. Thank God for that word that we have. And everyone knows that we have to have a sure foundation or a solid foundation if you're living on a good house. Now, you can build the most fine house. You can build anything that's great. But if it's on a bad foundation, it's never going to be able to stand. And if we look at the foundations that we have, from what I've heard, if you don't have a good foundation, you better run. I've seen some houses that had foundation work that's being done. Thousands of dollars are being uh, put into some of these houses. And you heard of these homes with these foundation problems. And, and you think about the houses that are here and there. And you think that the ground is all right. And they make sure that the soil is just done, done just right. And then that foundation that's set there uh, ought to be right. But then they found out that they were all mistaken. Because they built on something that was not solid. Because they built on something that was not uh, necessarily the, the greatest thing to do. I think of this, California. Their foundation is not sure. In more than just political ways, their foundation is not sure. You begin to think of the mudslides and the earthquakes and everything that goes on out there. Uh, but thank God that the foundation that I can have the foundation that I can place my faith in is in the blood of Jesus Christ. And I've attempted, and maybe some of you have done this, have you ever walked on the beach and spent some time in the sand and your legs get sore because you're in that deep sand and it's so difficult to run around? I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to say beach, we're Baptists. The coast, have you ever gone to the coast? All right, yeah, there you go. Some of you, now you've been there with me. All right, and you're walking on that sand, and there's deep sand, and they have all those problems, and, and you're, you're, you're just getting tired, and then you get closer to the waves. You get closer to the water where it's compacted down. That water has uh, pounded it down and, and got it a little more firm. And then all of a sudden, Brother Steve, I begin to think, all right, I want to walk here because the foundation that I'm walking on is more firm. But then I realized, Dr. Steve, that when I'm standing there, I stand on the side and the waves start crashing across upon me that all of a sudden I feel the foundation 
just washing out from under my feet. And I can't stand there. Isn't it just like the devil to make you think, hey, if you get closer to this, that's going to cause a little turbulence. If you get closer to this, there'll be a little bit of solid there. But then all of a sudden, he's going to start pulling the foundation out from under your feet. But if we put our foundation as the Lord Jesus Christ... If we trust the Lord Jesus Christ as our solid foundation, then I guarantee you that we'll have nothing to fear. You say, well, Brother Shane, well, what kind of sure foundation are you talking about? And what kind of storms are you talking about? Well, when the storms come and the winds blow and the rain descends, as the Bible tells us and Jesus Christ said, then I guarantee you that we need that sure foundation. You say, well, what kind of foundation? Nevertheless, the foundation of God is sure. But thank God that there is safety and the foundation of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm glad that I have safety in Jesus. Have you ever been afraid of something and you just needed to run to someone, to somebody, to something? I've done that before in my life, I'll be honest with you. I, and I use my family a lot as illustrations because they're crazy. And, and it's... It's true. <laughs> we all agree to it. Hey, man. Uh, and, 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 and everybody can relate because you know what I think? Everybody else has got a little bit of crazy in them too. So you can relate to that crazy. Well, one morning, one afternoon, or one evening, rather, I was in this old house over in, in Douglasville, I believe it was, and it was the creepiest house we'd ever lived in had big old windows and then there was a storm that came uh, and we, we, we started seeing the lightning flashing and the thunder was rolling and the, the rain was going up against and the, the tree limbs were hitting those big old windows and I was scared to death and, and all of a sudden the lightning flashes and a big old boom and, and then what happens? The power goes out. And when the power went out, I did what every young boy would do, scream like a girl. I jumped up, I screamed like a girl I started running down the hallway and as I was running down the hallway then all of a sudden somebody grabs me and says, I got you and what do I do then? I scream like a girl I didn't know that it was my dad that had got me boy I thought somebody seriously had gotten to a hold of me and I was running for safety and then all of a sudden I realized Brother John, that I ran and found, and he, <laughs> I, it's not that I found him. Glory to God. <laughs> it's not that I, I went running. I just went running in the direction that I thought my dad would be, but he found me. And that is the safety that we have in our Heavenly Father, that we have a safety in that foundation that is Him. And if you look at the houses that are being built, you see that foundation that's being down first and, and everything that's built on that foundation and everything has to come up from that foundation. And I'm thankful that I have safety in the one that is my foundation and my solid salvation and, and, and safety is from the Lord. As a matter of fact, in Psalm chapter number 4, verse number 8, the Bible says this, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. Let me ask you a question. When's the last time that you've been able to lay down in peace and really get some good sleep? Glory to God. Pray for the rest of us. <laughs> hey, there are a lot of times that we have the storms and the trials and tribulations of our life that we really think and we just worry. But the psalmist is telling us in chapter number 4 that I'm going to lay me down and sleep in peace. For thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell where? In safety. He is the one that is taking care of us. And there's, there's, the, there's the tornadoes that come by and, and, and lift up those houses and, and take those houses away. But, but I, I'm going to try to do something if I, an anchor, a, a tornado is coming towards my house. I want to anchor to something that's going to be solid. And when the storms of our life come around and when the storms of our life go through our life, then we need to make sure that we are anchored to the solid foundation, the safety of Jesus Christ, our solid foundation, the safety of the rock. Now look with me in Matthew. If you can, go ahead and turn in your Bibles and look at this with me. Matthew chapter number 7. 
It says this in verse number 24, Therefore, whoso, whosoever heareth these things, these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. You realize that just because they had built on the foundation didn't deter the storm from coming still. Just because the foundation was the right thing and just because they had built on the right uh, material wasn't that it was going to stop everything from happening. But there, look at it, it says, And it fell not. Why? For it was founded upon a rock oh my glory thank God that we have a savior that is our safety that is our uh, sure fire thing that, that, that when fire comes and, and fire is too much for a house and, and when the winds come and it's too much and the pressure is too great and then the house cannot stand that thank God the foundation of God will still be standing there salvation and thankful that safety is in the salvation of Jesus Christ but not only safety but I want you to look with me in this the strength of the foundation what is the strength of the foundation look with me in verse number 19 now therefore there are no more strangers in Ephesians chapter number 2 excuse me Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 19 now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. I just want to go and say thank God for those that have already blazed a trail for us. Thank God that we do not have to make this on our own. We're building on something that someone else has already started that building process on. And then also, look who it says. Not only the apostles and prophets, but look at this. Look at this. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Now, I don't know, and I'm not very familiar with building foundations, and I'm not an expert on that by no means. There are men that are sitting here in this very congreg congregation that will be able to tell you and are experts in being able to tell you. But I understand that the Israelites, they wandered around for 40 years, and they slept, and they were in tents. Now, when you're putting a tent up, you need something semi-solid, but you don't need to have a whole lot of solid ground to put a tent on. And uh, they begin to uh, go in for years and years and years. They were there, but then they had to have men that would learn how to build foundations because they weren't living in their temporary dwellings anymore. They were starting to live in houses, building those houses when they had got to the promised land. And as they had done that, they had to learn how to dig a trench and then they had to learn how to pour rock down in there and lime in there and then they had to let it settle for a little while and, and build the house there on that. But then they found that there was a need of something. There was the need of a cornerstone. And you say, well, what was the cornerstone? Well, they didn't go out and they send and they put whatever they wanted or the house wherever they wanted it. They found a good, solid rock. Something, I, I love this, I love this, Brother Humphreys, something that was too big for them to move. <laughs> the foundation was placed on something that they themselves could not move. They couldn't touch it. They couldn't, nor could anybody else or anything else. And they found that cornerstone. But here I'm telling you that, thank God, that Jesus Christ is that cornerstone. Look, that verse number 20 says, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. And it's without Jesus Christ, there is no foundation in our faith. He is the strength of the foundation that we have all of these things found upon. The thank, uh, thank God that it is Jesus, the cornerstone. And then also in faith that we have. Look at 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse number 6. 1 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 6 says this, Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. <laughs> Thank God that I have the cornerstone that I can believe in, that I can trust in, that they learned on, or they leaned on that cornerstone that they need to have. That, that cornerstone was already there. God had already... <laughs> God had already laid out the foundation place that they needed to be. 
he had already placed beforehand years before the stone that where they needed to build on thank God that years from the foundations of the world <laughs> from the foundations of the world God knew exactly what we would need and God knew that we would need to have to have Jesus Christ as a cornerstone to build on to anchor down to and thank God that cornerstone is laid out and we don't trust in that cornerstone I promise you we will never stand but I thank God that we have that cornerstone, the strength of that foundation. I told you all a few weeks ago that I was uh, trying to uh, lose a little weight. Um, I went on a, a diet, um, a seafood diet. Just don't put it in front of me and I won't eat it. <laughs> but I, I, I really wanted to stop doing it. Then I, then I thought, well, I'm just going to stop drinking. And this is, this is my vice, y'all. Y'all are going to Mountain Dew. Whew, glory to God. Hallelujah. Some of y'all drink coffee. I drink Mountain Dew. I, 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 it gets in my bones. Glory to God. I can feel it. I'm just talking about it. Then, then I said, well, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to drink unsweet tea. I'm trying, y'all. I'm trying. And then I thought, maybe I just need to try nothing but water. And I started doing that. And you know what I, you know what I found out? That's good stuff. That water, it, it, it good. I, now, don't give me lukewarm water now. But you give me that good cold water. And all of a sudden, I start looking for that. And you know what I begin to do? You know what I'm beginning to do? I'm going past the Mountain Dew. And I'm looking for the water. Because then I, I thought to myself one day, I'm going to go ahead and drink me a Mountain Dew. And when I put a, took a sip of that, whew, it was too much. Something began to satisfy me. Something that was greater than what I thought I needed all along. That good cold drink of water. The psalmist says this in Psalm 42. He says that as the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. That foundation that we know that we're sure of is Jesus Christ. And as Jesus Christ, I can find that there is nothing that satisfies like him. <laughs> You can try to put anything in its place. And I'll be honest with you, the world does a wonderful job of trying to place those things in your way. You drive down the road and there's billboards advertising everything to try to replace Jesus. Then there's people that uh, you watch on television and you see television shows and they're placing everything in place of Jesus Christ. And they're trying to figure out that, that this can be better or this is more satisfying. But I'm telling you that the world is still looking for what we have already found, glory to God. God, we need to make sure to let them know that the foundation, the only foundation that brings satisfaction is the Lord Jesus Christ. There's none other that will ever do that for you. There's none other that will ever lift you up and help you in that way. That short satisfaction is always going to leave. Now, I guarantee you that you try to do this and, and that satisfaction will be for a little bit, but then it'll be gone and you'll be looking for the next fix. You'll be looking for the next thing. But Lord, thank God, in John chapter number 4, there was a little lady that was sitting by the well and he said to her that I am a river of life and if you drink of this well, it will be a springing well up inside of you and I'm thankful that when I was a six year old little boy that I didn't have to worry about trying to bring the foundation to myself but thank God I brought Jesus Christ to, uh, to myself and I'm thankful that uh, he has helped me and he's made that well up inside of me and he is the only thing that satisfies completely boy I long for the touch of God I long for to, to see Jesus Christ moving in a, in, a, in a congregation. I long for God to be able to do that. Just as that psalmist says, I'm longing for you, God. I'm satisfied in you. You say, well, how are you satisfied? Brother Earl, I'm satisfied that I'm saved. <laughs> now, if you're not saved with your salvation, 
uh, we're going to have to have a side Bible study over here after service tonight. But the salvation that we have is brings great salva- uh, uh, satisfaction to me. Psalm chapter number 91 says this, With long life I will satisfy him and show him whose salvation? God, my salvation. It's his salvation that I give. I pray to God that I have a long life. But I'll make sure that I want to pray this even more, Brother Earl, that I want to make sure that, God, if you give me a life, let me bring more people to heaven with me. Let me tell more people about Jesus Christ. Let me witness to more people. Let me tell them that there is something that satisfies beyond this world. There's something that satisfies beyond the drugs and beyond the sex and beyond all of these things that the world is offering to you, the alcohol and all those things that we have to look look out upon in the world. There is something greater than all those things. It is the salvation of Jesus Christ. And I'm satisfied that he saved me. (laughs) You say, Brother Shane, do you need anything else? Not really. I'm not looking for anything else. Now, I want to make sure that I do everything I can for the Lord Jesus Christ. But he saved me. What more could I ask for? I'm satisfied with that. But you know what? It gets even better. You realize that I don't have to live in this old body for eternity. (laughs) Aren't you glad you don't have to live in your body for all of eternity? Because there's coming a day that when Jesus Christ comes, I don't know what he looks like right now. I don't understand everything right now. To be honest with you, you say, Brother Shane, you're supposed to be the preacher and the pastor that, that can help along and be able to show people away. And, and I'm trying to do that, but if I told you that I had all the answers, I would be lying to you. I don't know how he's going to do it, but I know he's going to. He said, when I see him, I shall be like Now, I've heard some people say that means we're all going to be 33 years old. I don't know. To be honest with you, age 33 wasn't a very good year for me, so I'll be honest with you. Uh, You you could be that that age. Uh, Some people say that we'll be uh, however old, whatever you're going to be. All I know is I'm going to be like Jesus. And that is satisfaction enough. To know that Jesus Christ is going to give me exactly what he has. And one day that I'm going to to close my eyes in death. One day I'm going to close my eyes and on this side. But on the other side, glory to God, I'll get to see him. And then I will be just like him. When I see him, to be like him. We shall be and see like Jesus Christ. And we get to reign with him forevermore. What a wonderful thought to think that my satisfaction is in this sure foundation. The Lord is my foundation and He is sure. I love the very end of this. The Lord knoweth them that are His. There's coming a day when a call is going to be made. Brother Rick, I'm so glad to know that my name is on the list. And he knows where I'll be, what I'll be doing when he makes that final call. I want to ask you this tonight. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure that you know that you're his? Are you sure that you've placed your faith and trust on that sure foundation of Jesus Christ? There may be a lot of things going on in our life. But just know that the foundation of God is very sure. Very sure that He has done all things well. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank You for this night. God, I thank You for the foundation that You've given to us, the foundation of our faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, I beg You, God, that You would continue to have Your will in Your way. Lord, I pray You'd lift those up, Lord, that need encouragement right now. God, I pray that you would touch those that are uh, standing in need of time where their, their family has uh, gone on. Lord, I pray you give grant God, uh, peace and comfort to them. And Lord, we're thankful that we can have comfort in knowing that you are on your way to come and get us again. 
And Lord, we can have comfort in knowing that you have never left us. You've never forsaken us. God, we can have foundation, uh, uh, have confidence and comfort in knowing that you are our foundation and you are sure. God, you have uh, established this for us to be able to walk through this world. Lord, never alone, but God, along with you. Lord, I pray that those that are going through storms and trials and tribulations, God, that they would anchor down to that sure foundation. Heavenly Father, I love you. I praise you. Thank you for sending your Son, God. Jesus Christ, I thank you, God, for dying on a cross for me that I might have eternal life. And Lord, I'm so thankful that the Holy Spirit of God dwells within each and every one of us. Lord, I'm thankful, God, that one day I will be as you'd have me to be, just like Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, keep us safe as we travel home. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen.